This is a 12 minute film describing mangrove action projects, ecological mangrove restoration training, using a recent example from Krabi Town, southwest Thailand. Krabi Town is the provincial capital for Krabi province. It's based in a Ramsar site with plenty of mangroves all around and is a lively fishing community. Before the training started, the team went on a recce to Banglandar village, the other side of the river from Krabi town, to meet the community where one of the trainers had been doing a lot of restoration work in 2009. The Banglandar site was to be used during the training for a field trip to allow further explanation of the principles of ecological mangrove restoration. The main sponsor for the training was the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, also supported by the Mertz Foundation. Global Nature Fund, as the project holder, invited various implementation partners from around South and Southeast Asia to take part. Mangrove Action Project provided the facilitation, and we were supported by Roger de Freitas, new Mangrove Action Project board member. The trainers were greatly helped by Alba, volunteer for Mangrove Action Project, and Kunpur and Kunning, volunteer and MAPS field coordinator. Jim Enright of Mangrove Action Project's Southeast Asia office then opened the proceedings and invited various participants from around South and Southeast Asia to talk about the mangrove work that they've been carrying out themselves and the issues that they've faced. This was followed by a brief introduction to Mangrove Action Project itself, its aims and objectives and how it worked. The director, Alfredo, who's based in Washington State, and MAPS efforts to try and reduce mangrove consumption and the fact that the first priority is mangrove protection rather than restoration. The group then discussed the importance of better restoration as most projects fail or fail to reach their objectives as seen here in Aceh and Thailand. MAP consultant Dominic Woodhouse introduced Robin Lewis, the originator of EMR, and explained that the principles focus on restoring the hydrology using an example from Florida. This former mangrove was destroyed due to road building, but having re-established the hydrology and regraded the topography, the natural regeneration came in on its own, restoring a full, natural, healthy, biodiverse mangrove. This example also shows that there are advantages to the EMR method, that is potentially cheaper and works with nature, allowing species to find their own appropriate zoning. During breaks and for coffee, we were able to use the roof of the hotel, which gave a fantastic view over the mangroves and the Ramsar site. After the break, we talked about restoration objectives, noting that there were many possible objectives for mangrove restoration, including controlling erosion involving school children, climate change and sea level rise, uh, building protection, etc., etc. But EMR assumes we were trying to restore a full, healthy mangrove ecosystem. This led into the first stage of EMR, which we called Doing Your Homework. Having acquired a site to restore, there are lots of questions and bits of research that needs to be done, including talking to local people, finding out what's changed, looking to see what nature is telling us, and really getting a good understanding of the site. This would allow us to map it, preferably to scale, to allow discussion and planning, and crucially to involve local people right at the beginning to discuss actions and what they need. We then discussed tides and the depth, duration and frequency of inundation, the problems of salt, the problems of anoxic soils, to emphasise the importance of hydrology. Poor hydrology can produce hypersaline situations as shown here, stunted mangroves, but in general mangroves have big wide channels to provide plenty of flushing. Mangrove species have their own preference to where they live relative to sea level, we call this zoning. 
This means that one of the key factors to work out when looking at the new restoration site is where is the site relative to sea level and will the mangoes want to grow there? So how do you measure that? Knowing that mangoes like to grow somewhere between mean sea level and high tide mark, then use a tide table to note when it's going to be high water. Mark it permanently with a marker. And we found that using an auto level is the easiest way to do it, which is set up at 1 meter 50 making sure the telescope is flat and then use the measuring stick to see whether the heights that you're looking at are the same as your high water mark or higher or lower. To put all this theory into context we took the EMR session to Banglandar village where Mangrove Action Project and another NGO had been attempting to restore an old aquaculture pond. We took a group photo and then explained the work that had been carried out. Here the microtopography was too low relative to sea level for mangroves to regenerate. So the channels were being deepened and widened, producing micro elevation hills appropriate for mangrove growth. Everyone had a chance to become familiar with the auto level and thinking about uh, mangroves relative to sea height before going back to the village for very welcome snacks and coffees and drinks and then saying great thank you to the village who had been hosting the restoration site in 2009 and then various visiting groups since then. Day two was started by Jim looking at a review of EMR versus conventional planting. And then the the whole session broke up into groups to discuss further ways to restore very specific sites. We then went on to the next stage of EMR, running transects to be able to study a natural reference site. Studying a natural local piece of mangrove in this way gives one a good idea of what to expect on a restoration site and what needs to be done. Ideally the results are then drawn to be able to communicate with the rest of the team and the local community. This detail can then be taken into a full-scale map of the site, starting with old aerial photography and Google Earth to produce a scale map. Having mapped, planned and agreed with the local community what needs to happen, implementation is clearly going to be site-specific. Sometimes needing improved drainage, perhaps reconnection with the outside hydrology or fencing to keep out grazers so natural regeneration can come back. Here a channel need to be re-cleared re or perhaps the removal of debris. Following this Jim presented a case study from Bantelanok which is available on MAPS website. We then went on to present large-scale restoration where several ponds were being restored in one go. Appropriate protocols of how to deal with this, reconnecting the ponds with the outside hydrology and ensuring that the spoil produced out of the new channels was put into hills, not into new berms. Jim stressed the need for appropriate hydrology, showing that poor hydrology shown here can kill large area of mangroves or inappropriate culverts at the wrong height. The workshop discussed monitoring in great detail, the need for it in terms of correcting mistakes that have been made in the restoration process, ideally when to do it or how often, and various methods to be used, time-lapse, quadrats, transects, etc. We'd used the time-lapse example from Florida already. Here's a different one from Omkar in India. We also discussed the use of quadrats for control or planting, plant density, perhaps mortality of plants that have been inserted or dibbled, maybe biodiversity measures, and then how to store and use the data. We then showed another case history, this time from Indonesia and also available on MAPS website before discussing the generic issues surrounding so-called fishbone restoration. Fishbone relates to a technique of digging channels in the shape of a fish skeleton. This suffers from some technical issues of channels filling in and doesn't use the obvious or natural lower points of the land as shown here in the red. With the final review, this then brought the EMR training based in the hotel to an end and the end of day two. 
Day 3 was a trip around the crabby Ramsar site mangroves, organised by Ning and Wright of Map. Bang Non in the pink is an old friend of the trainers, and he kindly took us round in a couple of his boats around the crabby Ramsar site, and then showed in his community the waste bank he's established for recycling, before seeing some fish processing, done extremely skillfully by local people. Bang Nong's community's restoration work. Further driving around the island to see more of the Ramsar site. Visiting a batik production facility where we tried our hand at printing before lunch and then stopping at an arts and crafts shop. We then went through the mangroves further and saw some uh, wildlife including the snake and some monkeys taking pictures from all angles and a government uh, nursery before finally finishing for the day. Dinner on the final day was in Ao Nang, where we had time to relax on the beach and consider what we had learnt. We would like to thank very much the support from uh, BMZ, the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, as well as the Mertz Foundation and Udo from the Global Nature Fund. If you'd like to know more about EMR training, please get in contact with Alfredo the email address on the screen or contact us through the Mangrove Action Project website. Thank you very much for your attention.